Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at what is a reflex, the reflex arc, the importance of reflex arcs, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what do we mean by a reflex? It's quite a common term used in describing nervous systems, but we need to actually go through what it is in detail. So when you touch something very, very hot, for example, like a candle or a hot saucepan on the cooker, you immediately draw your hand away without really thinking about it. And this kind of response is what we call a reflex. The reaction is very, very rapid. So it happens in about less than one second. So it's very, very quick. And also we describe this reaction as being automatic and involuntary. There's no conscious thought required to do this. You don't need to think about, oh, I'm touching something hot, I need to withdraw my hand. And you can't stop it either. It's an automatic wired in response that is grown into our body when we're born and we can't stop the reaction from happening. It's also a very short lived reaction. It happens very quickly and it doesn't last for a long time. So once it's finished, it's finished. So here would be the start of the reflex where the body has realized you're near something dangerous. And then once the response has happened within even just a second, you've moved your arm and the end of the reflex has happened. And that's the end of it. And it's these characteristics which make any reaction a reflex. So any reaction the body makes to a stimulus, if it fits these qualities, we can describe it as being a reflex. So by definition, they are rapid responses which don't require any conscious thought. So the reflexes, the way they work is that they're controlled by a simple neuron pathway that's built into us. So we've mentioned in other videos how the human body consists of a complex system of neurons and different nervous systems running from the brain all the way down the spinal cord and through various parts of the body. But we also have some simple pathways wired into us from our very primitive days, which are still here and they're very, very useful. And it's these simple pathways which is what coordinates a reflex. And they're usually very localized pathways found at the part of the body where the reflex is occurring. So for example, if we're responding to touching something very hot, where the hand detects something is too hot to touch, the response coming back down to move our arm away, this whole coordination of the reflex is done at a level of the spinal cord near the arm. So it's local to the arm area. Similarly, if we were to walk onto a hot beach or very hot stones where it was too hot to touch with our feet, then that same response would happen. But because it's happening down at our feet, it needs to be local to the level of the leg. So this coordination of reflex is happening at the spinal cord local to the leg. There are other reflexes like in the eyes where if you look at direct sunlight or if you look at something very, very bright, we want to avert our eyes because it can be very, very dangerous. So the reflex to move our eye away is coordinated in the head. So it's always local to wherever it's happening, which makes it fast. So first of all, the response has to begin with a receptor, as most responses do. The receptor detects the stimulus or the change in a stimulus, and then this is what we will be responding to. So here we have in our hand receptors for temperature, and these receptors are modified so that they can turn whatever they're detecting into an electrical signal, which will pass into our nervous system. And that's what a receptor does. It detects a physical change and it turns this into an electrical signal. This can be done for, for example, touch, temperature, light, pressure, anything like that. So again, this receptor creating the signal passes that signal to a particular type of neuron known as a sensory neuron. And the sensory neuron takes this electrical signal and transmits it all the way into the spinal cord. And then it will end and synapse. So the sensory neuron carries the signal to the spinal cord and then it reaches a coordinator. So here you can see the signal is being passed on to something else known as the coordinator. And this coordinator is where it decides what response do we need to carry out? Where does it link to? It's going to link to the correct response to deal with this oncoming increase in temperature. And it tends to be an intermediate neuron or a relay neuron carrying the signal to the motor neuron. So we've got sensation which has described the idea that we're touching something or we're near to touching something very, very hot. The coordinator realizes this and takes on the information. So this would be the relay neuron. And it's decided that the link must be to a motor neuron that's going to move our arm away from this candle. So it connects to the correct motor neuron, which is this blue one. And the motor neuron travels the signal to the effector, the correct effector, which would be a muscle or a set of muscles, which then would cause us to contract our arm away from the candle. So this kind of circuit is already set up in very early days of our life, where if there is pain directed here, then the response has to be coordinated to this muscle. 
So this pathway is a hardwired set of neurons that's already present. The coordinator doesn't even need to decide at the moment which effector to go to because it's already been wired to join to this motor neuron. So via synapses, this circuit is telling us that pain on the hand leads to a response of moving the muscles in the arm to move that hand away. So why are reflex arcs even important? Reflexes are, as we said, very localized to the part of the body where they occur. So for example, if we were to touch something hot with our hand, the reflex arc takes the information in, processes the response, and moves our arm away. And it does this in a very local part of the spinal cord near the arm or the shoulder. And similarly, if this was for the leg, or for something in the head, like a blinking reflex, then it's always local to the effector, so it can happen very quickly. So the localization means that the response can be very rapid, and it can happen almost immediately. The signals don't have that far to go, and they don't have to go to the brain. It would be a waste of time if every signal went all the way up to the brain, which is right at the top of the body. And if you can imagine, if you stepped on something very hot with your feet, and the signal had to go all the way to the brain to coordinate its response and then be sent all the way back down, it's going to be so slow that by the time it's reached there, it would have been damaging to your actual skin. And by the time you've responded, you've probably already caused harm. The point of the speed of this is to withdraw the parts of the body and avoid the harm. As well as this, not only they're local, but they don't involve many synapses. Synapses slow down the transmission of an impulse across neurons, so having fewer synapses is an advantage. We've only got the synapse between the sensory and the relay, which is number one, and we've got the synapse between the relay and the motor neuron, which is number two. As opposed to going all the way up to the brain, where there would be various different synapses along the route, which would again slow the process down. So this means that reflexes are a very effective and maintained way through evolution of protecting the body from harm. So it doesn't just have to be towards hot things. It can be, for example, seeing an oncoming car very quickly with your eyes and making a quick reflex arc that causes us to run away or jump or look quickly. So there's various different reflexes found in the body. Although the reflex occurs at the point of the response, some of the signals will still be sent to the brain. So the reflex will happen as normal and be sent to the arm to move the arm away, but some signals do go to the brain as well. This might result in nothing, but sometimes it allows the brain consciously to override the response if it's a comprehensive decision-making process. And it's only if this is deemed necessary. So for example, you may have spent all afternoon preparing a meal for a group of people, and you may pick up the final plate, and it's been so well presented that even though it's burning you, you may override this and tell your hands not to let go because you don't want to spoil the meal. So some reflexes like this can be overridden by conscious thought. However, if the reflex was really strong, like if the temperature was far too hot, then it would probably result in you dropping that meal. The benefit of reflexes as well is that they're very simple and they can be built in at a very early age. So they don't have to be learnt through life and it's effective from birth. So obviously when babies are born, they're still learning a lot about the world and they're picking up all of these stimuli and their nervous system is still developing through time. And this is how they grow. But some of the reflexes can be put in before birth therefore they're all ready to go, because they're simple wiring steps from one neuron to the next. So some reflexes, like the grabbing reflex, is already built into the baby, so if you were to put your finger into the hand of a newborn baby, they grab it with their hand, because this is a reflex that's beneficial to their survival. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.